Good morning everyone. Um, just a minute or so before lunchtime today, before midday. I hope that you're all well. I hope you're all keeping safe. Um, it's lovely to be worshipping with you again this lunchtime. We are going to be thinking about names today. The names that are chosen for us at birth and the significance of those in the Bible and those for us individually. So we come together ready to begin. Morning Linda, ready to begin. And if you've got the booklet we're beginning on page seven. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people, we have gathered in God's presence, separated by distance, but united in God's love. So let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's lovely to be with you again as we join for these midday prayers. I'm standing up today, I'm on a bit of a wander, I'll try and stand still. Um, I'm trying to try and stand up and be, be a bit straighter, my back's been aching, I think probably because of the amount of sitting that we're doing. Anyway, so let's just have a moment of quiet as we examine ourselves and confess our sins. We say together, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of the Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. This morning our reading, this lunchtime our reading is from the, chap the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 57. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord has shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father, to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. All of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all the neighbours, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Names. It's always one of the first questions when someone's had a baby, isn't it? Oh, what have they had? A little girl or a little boy? Then you find out the weight and then you ask the name. Do you know the origins of your name? Do you know why your parents chose to call you what it was that they called you? People spend hours choosing names for babies. I can remember the discussions that Russ and I used to have went on for days and days. At that time, Russ worked away and he would suddenly ring up at whatever time as he was driving and say, I've been thinking, and he would come up with all sorts of random 
names um, that were disregarded by me quite quickly. I think the boys are quite pleased that they weren't called Wallace or Arthur. But there is a lot of choice and people take their time. Did you know that in the top 10 names in 2019, the boys were Liam, Oliver, Theodore, Declan, Henry, Owen, Finn, Caleb, Emmett and Benjamin. And for girls in 2019, it was Charlotte, Amelia, Violet, Aria, Aurora, Ava, Olivia, Vivian, Hazel and Nora. A very big collection of names. It got me thinking, it got me wondering, because John for us is just such a normal name. My husband, Russ, is Russell John. It's just a name that was, that's used um, and is quite often high up in the rankings. If I go back to the 1950s, long before we were born, but even back then, John was number one um, in the boys' names. It was John, James, William, Robert, David, Thomas, Alexander, George, Ian, Brian, Andrew, Michael, Alan. And girls was Margaret, Elizabeth, Mary, Catherine, Anne, Linda, Helen, Patricia, Irene, Agnes, Kathleen, and so on. The names have changed over the years. And there's some lovely names that have been used in history that are coming back, um, seeing Nora on the list and Charlotte. And then there, and Emmett. Emmett's a name that um, I associate with, with older people and now it's a baby's name. You all know my name, hopefully by now, Dany. I was named after my granny. Um, my my mum had this idea that I was going to be called Josephine. My dad didn't quite agree, I don't think. And I was named after my lovely big granny, um, as I called her. And she became known as Big Dany and I was Little Dany. And it's a name that my great-grandfather had brought back from South Africa. And beyond that, we don't really know much more. There is a painting of a, of a lady um, of ill repute where Dane is associated, but I've never seen the painting, so I can't comment. Um, Russ, my husband, he's actually Russell. And his mother's maiden name was Russell. So when he was born, he was named after that. And then the boys, um, Michael is a family name, um, my granddad was, was Michael. And then Daniel is sadly just Dany L, because I was Dany Lindley. Um, and friends of mine will, will find that funny because you know, they, they helped me, helped us choose that. But we spend a long time choosing names. And a name is like, um, it's, it's something that goes with us wherever we go. And some people do try and change the names and they do change the names for whatever reason. But most people stick with their given name. And no matter how we dress ourselves up, no matter whether we're wearing our finest robes or whether we're in um, a party dress or whether we're in our pyjamas, that name stays the same. And it's something that people can recall about us. They might not always come to mind as straight away then your name, but they do associate it with your face and who you are. And your name is a way that people can communicate with you. They can get your attention. In a crowd, if you just said, uh, you with the curly hair, you know, with the blue eyes, that wouldn't work. Dany works. And you don't tend to find many other Danies wherever you go. But you still, even if you have a name, I once taught in a class where we had um, three Hannahs. And they knew which Hannah it was that I was talking to. Um... On, on work, they had to write their surnames, but if I started to talk to a Hannah, they knew which Hannah it was I was speaking to. And John was the name given to Zechariah and Elizabeth from God, an English form of Johannes, which means Yahweh is gracious. It was a name that was um, used a lot in the Old Testament, and we find it in the Old Testament, and then we find it here with John the Baptist. And, you know, a name that just, um, as soon as we say John and we talk about the Bible, people will then 
pull up either John the disciple or John the Baptist. Each day hundreds are dying from this virus and they each have a name, a name that was chosen for them. And one of the things that I'm finding quite difficult is when we see the photographs of the NHS and the work and the carers that are dying. Um, but that, that's in a way that's good that we're finding it difficult, just just seeing their faces and putting their names next to those faces, because we mustn't lose sight that in all this, the numbers of people that are dying are all individuals. They're all named before God. People's lives, like yours and mine, have been ended prematurely. Their names are precious and their names are what will live on and be passed down in history as an auntie or an uncle or a brother or a sister. But the great thing is that we know that we are known by God long before we're born. We know that we are known by God long before we're given a human name. We are known and we are loved unconditionally. Psalm 91 says, because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. So as the numbers of the dead continue to rise, let us not forget that each of them is known by name. And behind that name is a whole life and a whole story. And we mustn't lose sight of that as time goes on and as we, um, as we grieve the loss of these people. Amen. So now we come to the time when we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed using the names that we know for God. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So now we come to our time of prayer. and I'm going to use prayers again from the Christian Aid website and using their prayer for medical workers everywhere. As it's Thursday and we'll be out with many of you clapping for the carers at eight o'clock. Restoring and healing God. Thank you for all carers and medical workers everywhere, embodying sacrificial love in these challenging times, putting the welfare of others before their own, staying away from their family and loved ones, comforting the concerned and bereaved, reassuring the anxious and vulnerable, working to heal and restore people who are ill, be their guide, strength, wisdom and hope. We pray for those in authority to do right by them, for proper protective equipment to be provided, for their dedication to be met with much gratitude and appreciation when they return home exhausted. And we pray for medical workers around the world, where resources and protective equipment are always in short supply. Not now, but always. 
May these extraordinary times lead to deep and necessary changes in how our world works, resulting in a genuine effort to address the profound injustice of life expectancy being determined by geography. To awaken us all to the reality of how connected we all are and to work together to create the community and the world we all want to be part of. So help us God. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we gather our prayers together, using whichever version of the Lord's Prayer you would like to say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Faithful God, may we who have shared in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us again at lunchtime today. I know people watch it at other times as well, but it's just lovely to be sharing live with, with some of you here. Ken will be leading us again tomorrow. I'm having my day off tomorrow, day of rest, um, intending on doing not a lot um, and just spending time relaxing with the family. I just wish you, um, you know, let you know that you're all in my prayers and God bless you all and, um, See you again soon.